What is up everybody, Escape211 here. We are on the test server and we're looking at the new weapon, the Storm Rack 8. Now we did get a sneak peek at the Storm Racks through the 12 because that's been in one of the banners, but um, this has uh, probably dropped in game by the time I'm showing this or will be dropping very soon. But this is the first Storm Rack weapon we're gonna look at. And you may have guessed already from looking at the other one, but this is a missile weapon, it's a legendary and it works just like the missile racks. It's just kind of the legendary, basically missile rack 2.0 that they came out with. All right, there are some important distinctions between the two first is that this has a shield breaker trait even though everything else is pretty much the same in the language here to the missile racks the shield breaker basically saying that it does extra damage to shields is the unique part it does 50 percent extra damage to shield at base and there's an implant that can increase that all right um there are some other stats that are different of note uh first of all the damage per magazine is higher but the actual damage per shot is slightly lower than the Missile Rack 8. I'm going to compare the Storm Rack 8 with the Missile Rack 8 because they're the closest cousin. Um, the reason that the overall damage is a little bit more, but the per shot is less, is because this has 8 in the magazine and the Missile Rack 8 only has 6. So the Storm Rack 8 has 8 in the chamber. Um, so basically, uh, even though you have a couple extra shots, you do need to line that up. But, but since this is burst damage uh, and it kind of just fires everything at once, this you know ultimately this damage number is going to be more significant than like with others where it takes longer to do it um so your dps isn't going to be too different between the two uh just because it's very fast firing the reload speed is one second higher um but that's not a huge deal because it has a great reload implant um the optimal range is 10 meters higher and then it has this shield damage that's the same all the way across. The other thing to note, and what upgrades here, is the damage radius. This is a big one, all right? This starts at 7.5. Um, the Misarak 8 starts at 4.5, and even if you put the uh, legendary um, radius implant on it, it only goes up to 7.4. And this, it, it, for reference point, 7.5 is the same radius as the VRPG. So it's okay, but it's not exactly great. This actually has an epic radius implant, the Storm Rack 8 does, and it will get up to like 9.2, which is pretty much the same radius as a disc launcher, all right? That's not with implants. Disc launcher gets insane once you put implants on it, but 9.2 is pretty respectable for um, a uh, radius um, for like an area effect type splash weapon. So not bad there for sure. That's definitely a good thing. Um, and uh, the other thing to note is the implants, all right? I'm going to go over to it while I'm talking about it just so we can kind of look at them. But the implants on this weapon are interesting. Uh, missile Rack typically has its damage, and then the other one is the, the radius, like I just talked about, that's legendary. Still doesn't get as high as the Storm Rack with its epic. But the other things that um, it has for its... Uh, legendary implants are only reload and shield damage. The shield damage could come in really handy if you fight Aegis, but I don't know if it's going to be worth it beyond that. Uh, the reload, though, is really nice. It takes the reload on this weapon down to, like, 5 seconds. It's 5.5 specifically. Um, there is an epic one that's for the Missile Rack 8 that only gets to like eight seconds when you use the epic one so this will actually be significant for the reload and we'll see uh when we play the top end version you'll see how quickly these come back and how you can just you know keep firing uh have a lot of pressure with it potentially um but yeah i mean this is this is interesting because there's no damage one here the damage one comes up when you get into the epics um so it's it's uh it's implant like you know dispersion is kind of strange um but you know that's just how they do it I, I didn't play around much with this reload one. Um, actually, I used it, uh, I think, with uh, my Aegis. I'm, I did an Aegis run for the first one, and you'll see how that um, how that goes. One other thing I will say before I show you my match here is that the fire pattern for these is a little bit different, uh, and that kind of plays into the weapon. I'll show it here, but you can see that the Missile Rack 8 just shoots directly at the center, um, center mass where you tell it to, basically on the dot. And then the Storm Rack 8 will kind of shoot. I'm using the dot circle reticle there. And you'll see how it like kind of goes around in the circle instead of right on the dot. Um, you know, a little bit more unwieldy in a sense. But because you have all that area damage, it actually might be easier in that sense to hit your targets. But that's overall the feel and execution kind of like of the basics of this weapon. But I wanted to show you at its natural star rating how it goes on tier 5. And then show you it maxed out. So here we go. All right, uh, this map I think will work pretty well here. 
There's a decent amount of stuff to bank stuff off, so I like that. Uh, I will put my build up, but we're running, I think like I said before, basically a tier five type hanger, um, just because that is what the Storm Rack 8 comes out in. So I'm running it on the Aegis. I actually was gonna try to run it on Redeemer, um, but I felt like doing Aegis this time. Both would work decently here. Oh man, because the, the shots go a little bit off, I have to get used to the pattern and I still sometimes hit the edge of uh, edge of stuff um, when I'm trying to peek out. It's not very easy to peek shoot, or not as easy, I think, as it is with some other weapons, but it's still not bad. It's pretty good, in fact. So uh, I am using the Epic implant for the reload, and when I use that, um, this gets a reload that is similar to, like, the natural reload on a Missile Rack 8. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry, not the natural reload. The natural reload is 10. The um, the reload gets to 8.1, so, <coughs> excuse me, not quite as good as the, I think it is for, um, with the legendary reload, but it's not too bad. Ooh, let's see if we can get this guy. Um, did some damage. You punk, get out of here. Ah, uh, man. I... I was never really a heavy missile rack user, so I'm pretty bad with it, but um, I do feel like this is a little easier to aim with. It's just, uh, you know, you kind of got to get used to it, just because it's not as it's not as solid in its direct fire, but because it has the extra radius, you can get away with hitting stuff more on the sides or in the back. Um, so, like right there, I started hitting at that, you know. I mean... Same kind of stuff you would do with like disc launcher or anything like that. It's just that it's a fire all type of situation, so it's a little bit different. But um, if you're good with missile racks already, this should feel really comfortable, I think, for you. Um, it'd be easier to run. Oh man, I'm kind of in a bad spot here. I really want to kill this guy, but I think I'm going to put myself in a bad spot with those guys on the opposite side. Okay. No. Oh my gosh, this guy is targeting me now. Oh man, I'm going to have to kill these too fast. Oh, nice, nice. All right. Yeah, this is this is not doing too bad at hitting the targets. Go ahead. Now you can waste your shots on me. Because he's slow, I can get some decent... Ooh, got him too. Oh, that one's another Zephyr. Kind of surprised we got him, but it must have hit right behind him. Again, that radius is putting in the work. Even got the boogeyman. Let's go. All right, we got one guy left. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm overall, you know, happy with the performance of this weapon. Like I said, if you're a Missile Rack user, this is gonna feel great. Probably just, yeah, it's actually gonna be easier to pilot, I think. Um, and I'm surprised how many back kills I got with it. But because the radius is pretty darn good, it's probably gonna happen a lot more for other people. And it's natural star rating here, I was happy with its performance. What's gonna be hard is seeing it max. I'm gonna try that next just because I'm gonna use it with a light mech. Uh, and that's going to be tricky to do at end game, but that's probably the best way to just kind of see and, and put it through the ringer. So let's try that now. Ooh, I don't know exactly how this map is going to go. Well, I'm trying to do this with Shadow. This has been tricky. I've tried it for a few times, and it's very easy with the guy right next to me. Those nomads, dude, they easily one shot me even when I'm stealthed half the time. Well, probably more than half the time, but they can get some easy shots on you. So we're going to have to play cautious. But I did want to just show like how it is at the top end. Um, I'll, I'll put my build up uh, in the beginning there. Um, but you can see already, I, I have the legendary um, cooldown and the legendary cooldown on my ability as well as, I'm sorry, I, uh, legendary ability cooldown. I can't like talk and, and play at the same time. Uh, and the legendary reload on this. And they're about the same. The, the legendary reload on this is pretty significant. I'm doing dual fire um, just because I think I'm going to need to to make sure I kill stuff. I feel like the 8 is not quite killing stuff at legendary status on its own as easily, but that's kind of to be expected. But you can see it does pretty solid chunks of damage. Um, it's just not as easily going to kill stuff as some other things. But the reload there is pretty solid. I'm, I'm happy with how it performs even here. Right, got this guy close to us. No. Okay, good. Got him. I was too busy looking at that guy further away at first. Okay. But yeah, look at that. Boom. All right. I wanted to see if I could... Nope. Well, I did hit the other guy behind him. 
for some decent chunks. I was trying to hit him right behind there, but now we can get him. There we go. Even sprayed those guys a little bit. Nice. Yeah, I mean, you can see where... Oh, gosh. This could be bad. Okay, good. <coughs> see you sneaking up. I thought he was going to be down the lane. That was going to have to get a shot over to him. But you can see when we do the singleton fire, um, you... If you put a little bit of a pause in between, it's, it's not too bad, and it'll feel like almost consistent with its fire. Ooh, we got a big brick house over here. See, look at that. I did two volleys, one right after another, and then my my original is almost back up. That feels crazy for missile rack type weapons. You could just continually fire the burst. I mean, obviously your damage is split up. Oh, he was behind that. Whoops, my bad. I thought he was walking in front of it. Um, obviously your damage is split up, which is less favorable. I don't want to get hit by those discs um but the idea of having constant fire from a burst weapon like this is pretty awesome um and the idea of the radius that it has so shots are easier to land okay some of those hit not much i thought the more we're gonna land um but i i don't know i i gotta say it overall seems like it's working pretty well for me um i think there's a lot of good potential here okay it's like i'm pretty sure you got the amps but look at that i mean Doing solid damage there on, on max spots. So I'm happy with its overall performance in that sense. <coughs> oh no. Oh, I didn't peek out enough. My bad. Well, we still got him. That's good. Yeah, not an insane amount of kills. It's a lot harder to get kills with this thing at the top. But the fact, I mean, I was also playing cautiously because I'm using Shadow. But doing that well with an 8 energy weapon at the top end on something that is this light against max spots isn't that bad. So I actually think the potential for this, um, if you run it with like a higher caliber weapon, could actually be pretty solid. So um, yeah, overall, I'm, I'm happy with the way that performed. And that is the Storm Rack 8, you guys. Not a whole lot more to say. I mean, you kind of get an idea of how this weapon works. Um, I do said, I, I think I said it before, but the way this weapon looks for how tiny it is is a little strange. Uh, I am curious to see what variants they come out with this. If they're going to have like a 6, they're going to do a 10. I hope they're going to do a 16. I think that would be really cool. Um, but the 12 will definitely be an interesting one to see how that plays out. But I think even as it stands, this 8 is pretty strong. And uh, even in its current iteration, could be effective even at endgame. Not like amazing, but still decent enough if you wanted to do like a 12-8 or like an 8-16. If they come out with a 16, uh, I could see it being viable. But you guys can let me know what you think. Feel free to comment below, and we'll see you out there on the battlefield.